I'm going to ask you guys this first. Do you guys think that Kaido is really done? And if he is, then what are you looking forward to the most for before the arc ends? Warning, this video will contain spoilers up to chapter 1050. You've been warned. Hello Manakamatachi, this is Joy Girl, and I'm going to admit that this is probably the most conflicted or unsure I felt about a One Piece chapter. Everything on paper has explicitly told us that this battle between Luffy and Kaido is over, and yet I know that there is still quite a prevalent mood within the fanbase that this fight is not yet completed, which I have to say I'm somewhat guilty of partly suspecting too. But I was curious to find out just exactly how many of us did think the fight was over or not, so I asked you guys. And 63% of the Joy Fleet responded that the battle is indeed over. But 21% answered no, and 16% of you guys answered that you simply don't know. Although according to some of the comments, you may have been answering a different question entirely, because apparently my question in the polls wasn't quite clear enough, and some of you weren't sure whether I was asking whether this fight is over, whether the Wano arc in general is over, and for a certain Joy Fleet member, a certain Iguila Luigi, whether the COVID pandemic is over. So perhaps the more illuminating or meaningful question I should have asked is if this fight is indeed over, would you be satisfied? And well to that I have both good news and bad news. And bad news first because that's just the type of person I am. That was not the question I asked in the poll. But the good news is that a certain Mr. Grand Line review did. So I'm going to do a very piratey thing and I'm going to steal the results of his survey to say that... 65% of the Grand Fleet responded that they are satisfied with the ending, 17% answered no, and a slightly higher 18% responded that they felt neutral about the conclusion of this battle. And a big sorry to Liam, but an even greater thank you for asking this question because I find the results of this survey really intriguing or fascinating in that the statistics for how satisfied the Grand Fleet is with the ending of this battle lines up very similarly to the appearance opinion of the Joy Fleet as to whether this fight is actually over. Now only if I created the most ultimate poll and asked, do you think this fight is over? And if so, how satisfied are you with the ending? Which would then just bring us to another round of good news, bad news. And the bad news is neither I nor Liam asked that question, nor did any other One Piece YouTubers to the best of my knowledge actually. But the good news is you can let me know your answer to that question by leaving a comment below. And you know what, whilst you're at it, why don't you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already? And if you have, well then, like this video. So I have to say that personally, I was largely in the unsure camp for both these questions, which isn't to say that I'm disappointed or that I've disliked the last couple of chapters at all, but I am genuinely left wondering whether this is really it because a substantial part of me still feels like it's not yet over. And I will admit that as someone who's on YouTube voicing my thoughts and my opinions and my wishes as to what I would like to see, such as witnessing Kaido's downfall and Luffy punching his way to victory to coincide with the dawn, for example, it's true that I've had my own expectations that obviously weren't met. And I'm sure many of you who watch my videos or the videos of other One Piece content creators who also voice their own opinions, you've also all had certain expectations, whether they be your own expectations and speculations or whether they be influenced by the content that you watch or read online. And the fact is, these expectations just simply didn't eventuate. But I don't think it's fair to say that those who do feel disappointed or unsatisfied with the ending only feel that way because they had their own expectations which weren't then met. Because personally speaking, what affected my reaction to this ending, more so than my personal expectations and what I wanted to see, are actually the expectations that Oda himself had established. For example, when I think of some of the best 
most satisfying endings to Luffy's fights, I think of Crocodile, I think of Anel, I think of Doflamingo and Katakuri. And with each of these examples, there were moments which made me feel with absolute certainty that Luffy had won. And I can't really say the same for Luffy versus Kaido. But I do want to preface this discussion with the disclaimer that Wano is the first arc that I'm reading on a weekly basis, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that boat. I know that the COVID pandemic brought in a huge influx of new One Piece fans who binge read the series like I did and caught up at Wano. And so in that sense, it is possible that a part of my uncertainty could be attributed to me not binge reading the recent chapters, you know, one after another to build up that tension to the climax and then that final decisive moment, that decisive end of the battle and all in that one sitting. But even with that considered, I'm just not sure that there was this decisive moment where it really made me feel like, wow, Luffy has really done it, you know, Luffy has really just won. Or is that just a testament to how Oda built up Kaido as a villain? You know, to the extent that after all of this, all of the battles that he's faced, all of the damage he's taken, all of this still isn't enough to convince the fan base that he has been defeated once and for all. But for me, I think part of the reason why I felt that way is because up until chapter 1049, I never really got the feeling that Kaido was really struggling. I mean, sure, Luffy knocked him down a couple of times, but Kaido always got back up, and quite easily, I might add. You know, the strongest creature never had a truly weak or vulnerable moment. We started seeing a repeat of chapters ending with Luffy's attack, only for Kaido to get back up in the next chapter. And yes, it's true that Kaido was also expending a whole lot of energy having to transport Onigashima, but again, it was only in chapter 1049 that we saw the flame clouds rapidly disappear to showcase Kaido's strength dwindling. So really, up until this point, I never got the feeling that Luffy had done a whole lot of damage to Kaido to make me feel that this last punch would be any different. Apart from the fact that obviously the narration box literally told us that Luffy had done it and told us that Luffy had won, but the greatest part of any writing and of Oda's writing especially is show not tell. And in terms of what we have been shown in this battle at Onigashima, this ending of Luffy versus Kaido feels somewhat different to the endings of the other monumental battles that we've seen. For example, with Crocodile, he was thrown up into the sky for everyone to witness his defeat, symbolically unveiling the true boss of the underworld who was responsible for all of Alabaster's woes. With Anel, Luffy punched through the fake god to ring the golden bell and literally sound the news of his victory. With Doflamingo, everyone at Dressrosa witnessed Luffy punching him down from the heights of the heavens, cracking his sunglasses, cracking the ground, you know, cracking the foundation of lies that Doflamingo used to rule the kingdom. And with Katakuri, the commander himself conceded defeat, you know, falling on his back, making it clear that Luffy had broken down and broken through his ideologies and broken through his beliefs. Whereas with Kaido, I just personally didn't feel that same level of gravitas or that great moment of great symbolic meaning to coincide with Luffy's victory. But then again, was this on purpose? I mean, when you look back at the arcs, a running theme or a point of similarity between these arcs, between these examples, is that in all of those arcs, while there was a great deal of suffering and pain that was occurring underneath the surface, these sort of tragedies or twisted manipulation wasn't always clear for everyone. I mean, at Alabasta, Crocodile was seen as a hero in the same with Doflamingo. Whole Cake Island masquerades as some sort of sickly sweet and jolly Disneyland. And even at Skypiea, the Straw Hats weren't always aware of all the dark things and all the issues going on until only later in the arc. 
But then at Wano, the pain and the suffering was made explicitly clear from the very beginning. You know, Kaido and his crew were brutally terrorizing the people of Wano out in the open. So perhaps in previous arcs, the symbolic victory of Luffy exposing the antagonists for who they truly are was necessary, but maybe it's the other way around at Wano. I mean, the Wano citizens only have one day of the year to celebrate. And what we've seen is that Luffy and Momo's combined effort allowed the citizens of Wano to continue celebrating through the night, through the festival's entirety without any sort of concerns and without adding to their traumatic experience of being under the threat of an ongoing war. You know, it's only as the festival is winding down that the volcanic explosion alerted them that something is going on, but the time they realize the great battle is already over, you know, it's already won. And when you think about it that way, there is some really beautiful meaning in that as well. But I do have to say that another expectation that Oda did set up for us was the incredibly deep and complex characterization of his antagonists and their extensive backstories. And granted, this is something that Oda has only started doing relatively recently since the time skip with Doflamingo. But since Dress Rosa, Oda has put in a lot of effort and a lot of time establishing, you know, the dark and painful past and histories of his villains, you know, backstories that have really shaped them into becoming the antagonists of the present. I mean, for Doflamingo, we were made to sympathize with his dark past as a fallen celestial dragon. With Katakuri, his relationship with his sister with Brulee and the rest of the world meant that he was made less of a villain and almost more of an anti-hero. And when it comes to Big Mom, her tragic backstory completely recontextualizes how we view that fearsome Yonko. And so we've seen in recent arcs that Oda has really stepped it up in terms of the complexity of his antagonists and thereby making his series even more intriguing and thought-provoking. Really driving home a core element of One Piece that the most significant battles are battles of ideologies. And so it's only natural that we do expect the same at Wano. And to be fair, it is clear that Oda has done this for Kaido. I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again. With all the comments that we've seen on the side, all those bits and pieces of dialogue, it's clear that Kaido is an extremely complex character. And we have seen some of the flashbacks to back that up, but we really haven't seen it to the full extent needed to truly understand his motivations and truly understand his values and ideology. And I know the argument since chapter 1049 is that we will likely see more of Kaido's backstory when we finally come to witness the full story of what happened at God Valley because it's true that a part of Kaido's past is tied to what went down at that legendary island. But from the bits and pieces of Kaido's backstory that we have seen so far, it's clear that there is much more to Kaido's story than just his time with Rox D. Zebek. And Oda really only gave us enough so that we have to fill in the blanks. Which sure was fun for me to do, but it's fair to expect that the villain of the largest arc to date will receive the same sort of treatment as previous antagonists. You know, that Oda will fully flesh out his backstory so that the battle between him and Luffy will feel more whole, and so that Luffy's victory, including that ideological battle, this final victory will feel complete. And another expectation that I have seen some people commenting about is of Kaido's awakening. And now this isn't one that I've personally been waiting for all that much, but I can understand why some people have and I can understand why people feel like this has been set up. I mean, we witnessed multiple awakenings throughout the raid, so I can understand why people would expect the final boss to have achieved his awakening, you know, given his experience and his strength. And especially given how Zoan Devil Fruit Awakenings have been previously hyped up and were also the first examples of an awakening that we've seen in the series. But the expectation for Kaido's awakening is one that I think is slightly more refutable. I mean, there's the fact that Kaido's devil fruit is actually a mythical fish, so his dragon form may actually be already the awakening. But in that case, 
I do agree that that is probably something that we should be aware of. But also, there's still the fact that the arc isn't over yet. And I've also seen that some people are expecting for Kaido to get back up, not necessarily to continue the fight with Luffy, but for some other purpose, you know, such as fighting the Marines, for example. Because it is true that there are still heaps of unresolved storylines, even if this fight between Luffy and Kaido is over. And if Kaido does indeed get back up, then maybe we will witness his awakened form, you know, if it isn't simply his dragon form. But putting awakenings aside, even putting the raid and the battle aside, this is really what I'm now excited for. There is still really so much left to explore at Wano, and there's so much that Oda can do and so many different ways that he can take his story. Which is probably the thing that this arc has taught us most than anything else. You know, regardless of our own expectations, regardless of the expectations that Oda has established himself, at the end of the day, this is his story and Oda always ends up surprising us. And while I thought that it would be cool to witness the dawn coinciding with Luffy's victory, now if the battle is over, then it's possible that the rising of the sun will coincide with the opening of Wano's borders instead. And you know, maybe that will involve Kaido and maybe it won't. Or maybe the dawn Dawn Rising is simply something that the entire country witnesses together. Maybe it'll involve the Marines currently present at Wano, you know, spelling even worse news for the world government, because we can bet that the opening of Wano's borders is intricately linked to the deeper lore going on in the series. And on that note, there are some really big lore reveals that we should probably prepare for. For example, what Momonosuke now knows from Odin's journal, the fact that Zunesha is here, all the poneglyphs that we found the road poneglyph that we still have yet to find and of course something unrelated to lore but something that i'm really excited for that great feast with everyone at the end of Wano, which is probably what i'm looking forward to the most and who knows maybe it's actually the feast when we'll see the sunrise. And I mean, just how beautiful would that be? So then thinking about all of these possibilities that we have left before we leave Wano, I actually now feel less conflicted and less unsure about the whole ending. And I actually feel much more excited for everything that we still have to look forward to in the arc. And I know some people are just really keen to leave Wano because of the sheer length and the sheer volume of the arc. But I just can't help but think of Oda's message from the last Jump Festa when he said that he's really excited to draw that final panel of Wano. And so I just know that we are really in for quite a treat. But anyways, those were just some of my thoughts and some of my ramblings, but I would love to hear your thoughts on the whole matter. So please do leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and share the video. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. You can also join our Joyfleet Discord server or even become a Patreon member. And I do want to thank all our patrons for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.